Last year, obviously, there was great success at Le Mans, uh, another win later in the year. But I know that uh, for your pressures and what you're trying to achieve, you want to win every race. What did you do going into the off season to get ready for 2015 as a whole with the chassis uh, to say, OK, we want to get some of those six more of those six hour races, too? Well, on the review of the 2014 year, I wouldn't be too negative on it. Yes, we missed our goal. We went in to become world champion. We missed out on that. On the other hand side, with such competition out there, with such different characters and tracks uh, we race on, you know, to win them all, for me, it's impossible. But we missed out on winning the championship. Um, so for sure, we're back in 15 to make up for that, um, to once again, give it all to win Le Mans uh, and also the world championship. How do we prepare to do so? Um, well, being on restricted budgets as everybody, we had to very well assess where to spend the possibilities we have in a most efficient way regarding the performance to be gained. So therefore we decided that we stay another year with a structural spine, I call it, with a monocoque gearbox structure and the philosophy of the engine um, and invest into directly performance related items. Uh, so we will have uh, the 4 megajoule system in the car now. Uh, we invested quite a lot into aero performance, um, other minor steps for hopefully have a bit better tire performance. So, you know, there are specific areas we detected, addressed, and hopefully, you know, made a step which will put us ahead of the competition. I think we see with a lot of the P1 hybrid prototypes, each year there tends to be an evolution, an evolutionary approach, yet in reality these aren't little small little widgets and such. Evolution is actually still a lot of work, a lot of redesign work. How intensive is that, uh, the evolution that again is probably really major work? Well, if you say major or minor evolution if it comes to performance gain it is a big step for sure um, but for me the base of that is a completely new regulations that we saw for 2014 uh, be building a complete new car to a very new philosophy gives us enough potentials that we can unleash for the following season so based on that kind of we could afford um, with expectation still to make a quite an improvement in performance, but not radically build a complete new car. So when we talk about evolutionary car, it's because it's not 100% new, but from the performance step, we still believe that it will be a major one. The move to four megajoules, maybe not a huge step, but still a significant uh, increase. Why not aim higher? We know that some of the other teams in a P1 hybrid are looking to get as, as much as the maximum eight. Well, if you look into motor racing, it's always maximum power, yeah? And also we would have the desire to have it maximum. But there are a couple of restrictions. And when we say, for example, that we stick with a diesel combustion philosophy, we have a lot of weight tied up there. So it leaves us a remaining open weight, which we can invest into hybrid power. Yes, maybe with a more risky approach, you could have jumped, could have jumped the class, but you have to see the overall picture. Is it worth running that risk? For us, no. We take step by step, try to thoroughly develop this technology and be ready to win races in 2015. Looking at the car, the tub looks familiar, but the aerodynamics up front certainly uh, vastly different than folks would have noticed last year. The engine cover appears to be a little bit different. So just externally, fans should be able to point out some of the differences. How aggressive did you go aero-wise to uh, find more optimization? Well, aggressive, for sure it is. Uh, a main target of a good drivable car, well balanced car. So from the drivability, it's for sure not a radical approach. Uh, if you look into performance, uh, for sure it was one of our main aims where we thought we can catch up uh, performance-wise to the competition. Uh, and well, if you look at the front of the car, yes, it is drastically different, which doesn't mean towards the rear uh, it's it's the same. Um, the front of a car always dictates the aerodynamics over the complete car, and that's what we also see uh, on the 2015 Challenger. You don't get a chance to see how well your car is going to perform until we get to the prologue, then we get to Silverstone and such. Is this an awkward time where you do your best to develop the car, but still you won't know where you stand until you get to run with all the other cars? I take it as a positive, to be honest. It keeps you focused. If you stay away from the competition, you're focused on your concept. We believe in our concept. We believe in our targets that we set ourselves. 
uh, and the complete team stays focused to reach those very targets. If they have been good enough or not, yes, we don't see till the prologue, probably till Silverstone, maybe even till Le Mans. But that gives us now this period of focused, concentrated work to get to achieve our goals. Last question for you. There's also been some evolution outside of the car with uh, a little bit of drive revolution as for uh, we have Tom retiring, some other adjustments there. We also have some adjustments on the engineering side with some uh, changes there too. How has that gone and how will that influence your season? Well, for sure, the, the car is one part, it's a major part, but there is a complete team, a complete structure which needs to be um, addressed, decided beforehand, and one is the engineering side. Uh, yes, we had some exchange of personal going on there, but once again, I think we very solidly based promotion out of our own group, um, which gives everybody, I, hopefully, a motivation that you can move on. You have the possibility, and therefore it was really a positive thing that we were able to appoint Justin into a race engineer, have done his, his previous job very successfully. So this gives you know perspective to everybody in the team, which is important. On the driver side, yes, you know there is a end to everybody's career at one point. Um, so we were able once again to move Oli up, to move Rene in, out of our own group of uh, Audi racers. Um, I think it, it, it went very neat. Uh, and I'm looking forward that these guys, um, yeah, for, for themselves, each for themselves, now looking forward to perform up to the expectation.